Right where the Columbia River meets the Pacific Ocean, there's a massive wall of rock stretching out into the sea, 10 and a half kilometers long, hammered by waves taller than a three-story building. Most people have never heard of it, but without this rock wall, hundreds of cargo ships could be stranded, trade routes cut off, and coastlines reshaped by the ocean's fury. Costing over $250 million and built using boulders as heavy as elephants, this is one of the largest jetty reconstruction projects in U.S. history. It's not a flashy building or a towering bridge, but this colossal barrier quietly protects billions in trade every year. What's even more incredible? Each rock was tracked, weighed, and placed with surgical precision using a one-of-a-kind excavator unlike anything else in the world. So how did this rock wall come to exist? And what makes this stretch of ocean so dangerous that it earned the nickname Graveyard of the Pacific? Let's find out. We're here at the edge of the Pacific Northwest, where the Columbia River, the largest river on the U.S. West Coast, meets the vast, roaring Pacific Ocean. This isn't a simple river meeting the sea, it's a collision of forces. The Columbia stretches over 2,000 kilometers, draining water from seven states and even parts of Canada. For centuries, it's been a lifeline, carrying goods, fueling industries, and connecting communities. But right here, where it spills into the ocean, the conditions turn dangerous. Look at this. The mouth of the Columbia is one of the most treacherous bar crossings on Earth. Beneath the surface, an abrupt underwater slope twists the currents into a chaotic, unpredictable force. Towering ocean swells, some as high as 12 meters, crash into the river's outflow, creating a swirling, shifting battlefield of water. And when winter storms roll in, the danger multiplies. This place has claimed countless ships and lives, earning it a chilling nickname, the Graveyard of the Pacific. By the late 1800s, the U.S. government had seen enough. The Mississippi River's unpredictable shifts were already causing chaos for shipping, and Columbia's deadly mouth was the final straw. In 1882, they approved a bold, audacious plan, one that would force the river into submission. The solution? A massive jetty system. Imagine colossal walls of stone stretching into the sea, designed to control the river's flow, flush sediment into the ocean, and stop sand from clogging the channel. The first jetty, built on the river's south side, began taking shape in 1885. It was a monumental effort, 7.2 kilometers long, built from timber, stone, and sheer human determination. Workers drove wooden pilings deep into the seabed, laid down a rail system, and rolled massive boulders into the sea one by one from nearby quarries. And it worked. The river calmed. Ships could finally navigate the mouth without fearing the shifting sandbars. But the ocean? It's relentless. Over time, the waves battered the jetty, wearing it down. By the 1930s, entire sections had crumbled. The government had no choice but to rebuild, pouring millions more tons of stone into the sea. Decades passed, and the Columbia remained a vital artery, powering billions in shipping, fishing, and economic growth. But the ocean never stops. And so nearly 150 years after the first jetty was built, the government returned. Not to build, but to rebuild. Bigger, stronger, smarter. That brings us to today's $250 million rock wall, one of the largest jetty reconstruction projects in the country. But here's the real question. How do you even build something like this in the middle of the ocean? Picture this, a 10 and a half kilometer long rock wall stretching into the waves. Thousands of stones, each the size of a small car, carefully placed one at a time. That's what crews have been doing since 2016, rebuilding the three massive jetties at the mouth of the Columbia River. The project is divided into three parts. First came Jetty A, which started in 2016 and wrapped up the next year. Then came the North Jetty, completed in 2020. But the real challenge? The South Jetty. Work began in 2019 and is expected to finish in 2025, nearly a full decade after the project kicked off. This single section alone costs about $166 million. And when you see what goes into it, you'll understand why. Let's start with the stone. We're talking about 411,000 tons of rock. Each one has to be just the right size, between 5 and 35 tons. These aren't your average rocks, they're massive, heavy, and carefully chosen. 
To get them, crews blasted hillsides and quarries hundreds of miles away. The goal wasn't to break the rock into dust, it was to keep it big. Really big. Excavators then picked through the blasted stone to find the right sizes. That alone wasn't easy. Some chunks were over 80 tons and had to be cut down. Once chosen, each rock was weighed, tagged, and tracked. Then came the journey. Massive trucks hauled the boulders to the coast, sometimes carrying just one stone at a time. From there, they were loaded onto barges, 10,000 tons per trip, and floated down to the Columbia River. Once at the river, the work didn't slow down. The rocks were offloaded, hauled again by truck, and staged near the jetty. Every step was planned. Every rock had a number. Then, one by one, trucks drove them down the jetty. Some trips took 20 minutes each way. Sometimes, drivers had to reverse long distances along the narrow jetty top. At the end of the line waited the giant, the machine that made it all happen. It started life as a Caterpillar 6020B mining excavator. But this wasn't your average digger. It was customized beyond recognition. With an extended boom over 27 meters long, a specialized rock bucket, and a massive thumb attachment, it could grip, lift, and rotate the huge stones with precision. To make things even smarter, it had a GPS system on board. This let operators know exactly where each rock needed to go, down to the inch. Now picture this. The operator gently lowers a 30-ton boulder into the churning sea. The waves crash, the wind howls, but the machine doesn't flinch. Each rock fits like a puzzle piece, stacked, rotated, nudged into place. But this wasn't guesswork. This was engineering mixed with art. Because every stone needed to lock in with the next, tight enough to resist decades of pounding surf. That was the goal. Build a jetty so solid, the Pacific couldn't break it down. Crews worked for five seasons, packing up equipment every winter and returning in spring. They battled storms, tides, and a constantly changing shoreline. And still, the wall grew. Today, after nearly a decade, the rock wall is nearly complete. It guards the river's mouth, deflects massive waves, and keeps the shipping lanes clear. Without it, a single breach during a storm could send sand pouring into the channel, blocking cargo ships and forcing emergency repairs that could cost millions. But there's more to it than safety. This wall is shaping the coast. Since the jetties were first built in the 1800s, the shoreline around them has changed dramatically. Beaches built up where once there was ocean. In some areas, the land grew. In others, erosion is creeping back in. And with rising sea levels, stronger storms, and even the threat of earthquakes, this balance is always shifting. Scientists say a major earthquake in the region could cause the coastline to drop by up to 8 feet, leading to even more erosion. That's why every rock, every ton, every dollar in this project matters. It's not just a wall in the water. It's a defensive line for trade, for land, and for the people who live and work along the Columbia River. Would you have ever guessed that one of the most expensive ocean defenses in America was a giant rock wall most people have never heard of? If you want to see more incredible engineering stories like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell.